referred to in so many different ways. And we, we know that individually, personally, we all have a mandate, a command, a command. A, 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 um, what is it called? The Great Commission? Is that what it's called? I just, uh, you know, that we have a Great Commission to follow through on. And it is a personal thing. But it's also corporately and collectively. And so today we're here to celebrate. Celebrate what the Lord has done, what the Lord continues to do. Um, and I'm going to step out of the way here in a moment. I just want to just want to say this. I, I wrote down a few notes, and, and sometimes I read from my notes. Sometimes I, uh, most of the time, if the Spirit of God's got it in here, and, and that's what God wants me to say, then I, that's where I'm headed. But uh, today we just celebrate God working in his people. And it does say in Philippians 2, it's a, a life verse of mine. I mention it often, for it is God, which worketh in you both the will and to do of his good pleasure. It's, we're here to celebrate God and how he has been working and did work in in all the people's lives that were at BBSC, and it was according to his pleasure. Today we celebrate those in God's family who responded and said, you know what, I really want to serve. I want to actually sow spiritually. I want to sow in the fruit of the Spirit so that there will be a harvest and it won't be something of my flesh. And that's something that's a constant challenge for us, that we would sow in a place where it's of the Holy Spirit of God. And we covered that in Galatians chapter number 6, that uh, be not deceived, God is not mocked, for whatsoever man soweth, that so shall we also reap. And really, when you sow to the Spirit, then you reap not sparingly, but you reap an incredible harvest, and, and that's what you're going to hear this morning. Uh, what I want you to do is and just kind of, like I said, sit back and, uh, and just realize that our, our theme came on, was really lived out in the people's lives, and you're going to hear from them. And so, uh, Pam, Brian, Brenda, why don't you make your way up, and Brenda's trusty assistant, so we're going to have to really just kind of lock in and say, okay, God, what do you want to have for us? So first... Welcome our leaders of our sports camp, our Vacation Bible Sports Camp, Pam, Brian, and Brenda. You guys have it. Go right ahead. Good morning. I'm not nearly so tall. Good morning. Um, I joked with the first service, I am used to much smaller faces, so you guys are like all these big people faces. Um, I am Pam Snow, and um, I get to come to you from a very unique, and, and I... I, this word is thrown around a lot, but I mean that's just blessed by God position, um, that I get to be very intimately involved with the themes of our VBSC, um, and then the best part is I get to teach the Bible lessons, um, and it, it's just... There are so many things, after first service I just realized there are so many things that we could talk and share about VBSC, that the truth is um, you don't know until you're part of it. Um, but gosh, just let me tell you, um, it's so good. And so, you know, this year was different. Um, it was a year of transition. We had actually chosen this theme for last year, and I keep feeling like something happened last year, and I for some reason can't remember what was going on. Um, and so it got moved to this year. But as God being God knows, um, this, this idea of game on just resonated over and over again. And, and, and we approach this time, and we have to start planning this. As you can imagine, we start meeting months and months in advance and still not really knowing what's going to happen. What can we do? Can we, can we move the whole thing outside? We've always done half outside and half inside. But then, wow, that brings challenges. What's the weather going to be like? Um, just a whole host of things. What are the activities we're going to do with the kids when the sports part's done? And so just praying and asking, and God just kept over and over, what's the theme? It's game on. It's time to move in faith, to step out in faith and do what I'm asking you to do. And so, you know, the decisions were made, plans were put in motion, and it was game on um, for us. And so our, our Bible lessons were actually out of the book of Daniel. And we followed Daniel, you can call them Hanani, Azariah, and Mishael, you may know them as Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Um, these four young men, 
They're young men and they're even older men by the end of it, but the truth is the Bible actually very specifically tells us in, in Daniel chapter 1, they started out as children. And that became a really powerful um, kind of thread through this camp that, that wasn't what I intended, but it's just as God did it that these young men, we all have these game on moments where you're faced with a choice. Do I honor God or do I not honor him? And it might be that God wants to use you in a specific way. Are you going to be used or not? Sometimes it's an impossible situation and you just have to trust that God is going to come through for you because if he doesn't, but yet, so what do you do? Do you try to squirrel your way out of that situation or do you just trust God? And so we looked at these, um, just some of these game on moments where they chose to honor God um, even when the consequences that they were facing included death. And yet they did it anyway, and they did it because they had prepared their hearts already. And I, I, again, I encourage you to go back and look at Daniel chapter 1, because it specifically tells us these guys were children when this all started, and they were children in a wicked, perverse, twisted nation that had walked away from God, so much so he was allowing them to be conquered and carried into captivity. And even amongst, so the adults in these kids' life weren't necessarily good adults. And yet Daniel made a decision, you know, I know what the Bible says. I wonder what food we're going to get. I, there are some things I'm not supposed to eat. This is where it started. Um, you know what? I'm not going to defile myself. I'm not gonna, I don't know what these people are going to feed me. But I am purposed in his heart. And then when you read on, his companions were right there with him. I don't know how many other boys were carried off into Babylon, but these four children decided before they ever faced the situation that they were going to honor God. And when, so they prepared themselves to face these game on moments. And so then the rest of our week was just spent... You, know, you, don't, you don't just show up and then think that you're going to do what God wants you to do. Your heart has to be prepared, but then there's a decision to make. And so as I um, leave you guys, here's the thing that I just want to encourage you with um, and challenge you with. Because as the, the bringer of the Bible lessons, I have a vantage point like I have now where, you know, the kids have been, they're hot, and they're tired, and they've been playing sports, and they're having a good time, but they're also kind of melting a little bit. And so you think, what are they going to be like um, to receive the Word of God? And it's incredible. These boys and girls want to know this God that we talk about. They want to believe Him. They want to know that we believe them. And for everything else that's going on, I was even like, Lord, it's going to be outside. Are they going to be so distracted they can't hear anything that you have to say? No. And they may be wiggle and be squirrely, and it's still going in. And I get to see all their little eyes. It is the most blessed thing that I get to do because I get the eye contact. And they're thinking and they're asking questions and they're listening. They want to know about this God that we serve and these words are life. And I think it's easy to forget that sometimes as adults because we are distracted that God's words are powerful and they will change them as children and that their age is not an excuse. And last thing, I forgot to share it in first service. This has never happened. It's the fourth year. Um, I had some little kids make me cards, and it was so cute, and I was so excited, and I saw them handing out. I was like, oh, Miss Pam, you know, thank you for teaching us the Bible. But then I was almost sorry because I read it right before I was going to go teach, and I'm choked up because the messages that these, a couple of them in their own handwriting had said, thank you for teaching me that my age doesn't matter with God. And why that blessed me was that child between them and God received that. Their mama wasn't there. She didn't tell them what to say. Nobody, that was between, that was God in them. That child absorbing that, man, I'm a kid and God can, will, and wants to use me. And so that is my challenge to you. Take it seriously. It's the biggest blessing you can ever have teach the children that are in your lives even whether you're in faith place or not i get to shoot off and go see my little faces here in a second um, teach the children 
that are in your lives because they want to know, and even when you think they're not listening, they are listening. Hi, I want to start with Psalm 118, verse 23. This is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. That's what we get to see when we're at camp. We get to see God doing a work and bringing us together as teams and doing a work in the lives of these kids. Um, when we got the green light to go ahead and, and do VBSC this year, I think we were so excited, like Pam said. And um, I have the privilege of putting music to the memory verses. That's my little task. And God does that. He puts it in my head, he puts it in my heart, and I have to repeat it over and over again so I can teach it to everyone else. And uh, the best way to memorize or, um, is always to put something to music. How many of you remember when you were a little kid and, and those little songs you learned in Sunday school and you still remember them today? And you have special memories with those. And so that's what we want to do. We want to create special memories with these kids through song and through sports and through the Word of God. And putting the Word of God in their hearts is very important. It can stay with them for the rest of their lives. And so that's why it's so cool to be able to take this first and put it to music. It's such a joy to be part of the VBSC, helping the kids to understand the verse. We take it, we break it down, we help them understand what the phrases mean so that it's not just saying words, but that they really take it into their heart. And then we teach them to sing it. It takes some repetition for all of us, but we all try to make it through and we make it fun. And there are very few of these kids that actually walk away and don't learn those verses. Usually, most of them are done in two days, but they've got four days to learn it. And so it's really cool to have them run up to me at the end and say, Miss Brenda, can I sing it for you? Can I, can I say it for you? Even though they get a prize for that, the real prize is them hiding God's word in their heart. So for those of you that were at camp, I would like for you to stand up and help me sing the song. Okay? Isaiah 40, 30, 31. <laughs> Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall, but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. And they shall walk and not faint. Game on! Good morning. Um, this was, uh, as I shared in the first service, this was... Tammy is in my first time to be able to experience VBSC. I know this is the fourth year. Um, and so where God really allowed me to land in a place of is just an oversight of the, the bird's eye view of everything that was taking place. So I came alongside Brownie, I came alongside Jay, I came alongside um, Pam and just kind of followed them and shadowed them on everything that had taken place. Um, but my most important role was the horn, okay? to blow that horn in the right time so everybody knew when it was time to shift from one place to another, right? But also, um, I had the opportunity to be able to fly the drone, and that was fun, you know, to take videos and pictures and stuff. But with all of that, being able to move around, um, I really got to see what was really neat, because we had been gone for so long, um, we had not really seen this piece take place, and so... We really got to see the vision of this church actually working from God through the church body into the lives of our community. And so that whole vision of live faith, love others, and declare hope, we saw that taking place. And it made an impact and a difference in the life of our community. And um, I'll just share one story. Um, I was standing out front here, and, and you know, when the kids would come in, they would know exactly where to go. I mean, the first day, not so much, you know. We were kind of pointing at them, telling them to run. They were a little skittish. Well, second and third day, they just took off. It was no problem at all. They knew exactly what tent. And I was standing there at the, at the entrance, and there's this mom just watching her two children run. And uh, she just had her eyes focused on them, and, and she didn't even turn to look at me. She just said, thank you. Thank you for what you are doing for my family, for my children. And I just said, you know, it's, it's a pleasure of ours. It's, you know, to be able to invest into your children is amazing. 
Um, and we're so thankful to be able to do it. And I said, you know, this is a place that's Christ-centered where we teach the Word of God. And she goes, oh, I know. She goes, I'm learning just like them because on the way home, I'm hearing everything that they learned today. I hear it all the way home, you know. And then I remember Pam came, came kind of was walking up behind her and said, well, we love your children. And she just says, I know. We know you, you love our kids. And so this is something for us all to get involved with. And if you have not yet stepped foot on the fields out there during this VBSC or any type of ADP sports or anything, the families of this community, they know us. And they know what we stand for. And they even know we teach Jesus. And they still bring their kids. Amen? Because they're going to get it too. And so if you have not had the opportunity to invest into this ministry so you can see the vision of this, cur uh, of this uh, uh, church come to pass and happen, man, just... Take that leap of faith and look forward to next year. Amen? All right. Praise the Lord. Amen. Everybody that participated in VBSC, would you please come on up on the stage now for, for time and stuff like that? Team Army, Team Navy, Team Air Force. If you worked behind the scenes, if you served in any part of the ministry, I'd like you to come up. It'd be a great, real picture of what God did and has done through everyone that, that worked in and served in VBSC. I'm going to give uh, Team Army, Team Navy, and, and Air Force and Marines uh, an opportunity to share a little bit. And, and, but I want you to kind of get a picture of how God worked. This is not for you just, okay, uh, now legalistically, since I thought you were preaching against that. No, this is your liberty in Christ to serve God. You're free to choose to serve, and that's what everyone did here, and all of you that have in the past, many of you have, and I praise God for you. I'm just going to read off a bunch of people and just kind of just kind of uh, let you know who worked in some of the different areas. Uh, a registration crew, Mindy Patterson, Tammy Calloway, Cheryl Brown, Jennifer Sexton, Barbara Zink. Are any of them here? Oh, wait, Barbara, oh, you are, oh, goodness, they didn't show up in the first service. Well, uh, anyway, thank you for working in the registration crew. Yeah, they were here, and, and, and I noticed that some of them are probably still tired from registering those kids, since that is the food crew, and that, that's an incredible, the lunch crew, and what they all did to be part of making sure our rotation every single day worked. Marty Hodges, Crystal Clay, Patty Williams, Barbara Zink, Don Pratt, Karen Boynton, Laureen Ramey, and Cindy Bryles. Thank you for serving the Lord with a heart filled of Jesus Christ. Thank you so very, very much. Our next crew to recognize, the praise and worship team. You saw Matthew and Megan Tiller, of course, up here. There's also some of those that are behind the scenes. Ed Peasley, Greg Sexton, Dwayne Allen. Thank you. Ed, you know, hey, Ed. Ed has to come downstairs some more often. We, you can come down to see us anytime, Ed, that you'd like to come down. But praise the Lord. And then our photographer, the famous Robin Houston. Thank you, Robin. We also had, and he mentioned it a little earlier. Where's Brian? Brian also was the famous drone guy photographer. Yeah. And some of those pictures are a little shaky, so we're not sure what he was doing when he was running that. And then the crew that did a lot of cleanup, I want to mention them. There was setup and cleanup crew was everybody helped to do that. But there was a, a couple of people that really had that up. Steve and Cindy Bryles, Barbara Zink, Crystal Clay. They were dragging things, moving things. Thank you for making sure that everything was cleaned up every single day and everything that we did. So now I want to hear from, and we want to hear from now, uh, Team Army. And Team Army was the little kids, the five-year-olds, and they had a ball, and uh, I'm just going to let them share. So, guys, go right ahead. It's all yours. Team Army, go right ahead. And I'm Team Army, and we had five-year-olds, and we had 24 five-year-olds pretty much every day. But um, I must say it was a really good time. Um, <laughs> I've been in VBSC three times. This is my third time. I will be honest, this time I was not a willing participant in the beginning because it was going to, I work, I couldn't get off work, so I knew I was going to have to go to work afterwards, and it was all going to be outside. I don't like that. <laughs> um, and it was like 90 some degrees out there. 
So my shirt got uh, adjusted on about day two. It no longer has a collar. So I didn't wear it this morning. But anyway, um, I just want to tell you that it was a really great camp. We had, um, we had a, the kids were amazing. And I don't say that very often because there's usually some rotten kids in those groups. But <laughs> they were good kids. They were so ready to be out and about and away from home and, and doing something constructive. They were starved for that. And I, we were too. I mean, I can speak for myself. I was starved to be back in the ministry and being normal. Um, I did run into one of my little kids at work. I work in a pediatric office and about day two or three, I was in there and I walked by and she was in, I said, what are you doing here? And she looked at me, what are you doing here? <laughs> but um, I talked to her mom and they were so excited about what we do. This community loves this church and it's because we reach out, their kids have a safe place to go and they feel loved. Now, I will tell you, we taught 24 five-year-olds. They were really good kids this year. They really were. But I learned some things. I learned how to defend myself against an, a, a mean king if he comes to take me away. I will not tell you how to do that, but I learned how. Number two, I learned that in this church body, one of you has a cousin named Nebuchadnezzar. <laughs> Who knew? We also learned that, I taught with Debbie Kemper, we also learned that there's one true God, but there are two Debbies. <laughs> but I must, I really, I can't encourage you enough that if you have not done this, to do it. We're up on those fields all the time. The same families, a lot of the same families come. We do sign-ins for different sports activities up there, and it's some of the same families because they trust us with their kids. Um, so just come and be part of it. It's a lot of fun. Hi, I'm Lauren. I'm Team Army. Uh, first service, I was told I was a little too quiet, so I'm going to try and speak up a little bit. Also, according to Brenda, I didn't praise enough of the five-year-olds. Um, no, they were great. Awesome. They were so good. And uh, <laughs> I'm, being, I'm, I'm telling the truth. They're, they're good. Uh, but uh, I got permission from Becca after first service to tell this story about this little boy. I won't say his name, uh, but he kind of tugged on both of our hearts. And uh, I talked about him in first service. He knows if you show him your buttons, he will push it. I will say that. But he was amazing. He was just a little sweet boy. So cute. But uh, from I'm going to try and say the story like you told me, Becca. But uh, on the last day, he showed up uh, to Becca, and that was the day we gave out the Bibles. And he, according, like, five-year-olds can't read. Like, they can't. But, and he knew that. But he was so excited to get it that he came up to Becca, and he's like, where do I start? Where do I start reading? <laughs> and uh, Becca just said, well, here is good. I mean, all of it's good. But, I mean, like, you can start here. And he's like, well, I don't really know how to read. She's like, I know. <laughs> and so, <laughs> uh, but it was just so... It was very awesome to see that the eagerness of him and all the five-year-olds, really, they were so eager just to, like what Pam said, they were so eager just to listen. Like if you, and especially if you give them the time to listen to them, they will tell you anything. <laughs> they have no filter. They will tell you anything. Uh, <laughs> stuff you don't really need to know. But, uh, but they were so eager just to learn about them, and they just wanted to sit there and, you know, eat their Lunchables and everything and just and they all did their memory verses. I think all of them memorized it. And it was just really awesome. So, you know, Team Army is Micah Pittman, Debbie Venable, Christine Brown, Alexis Valverde, Debbie Kemper, Rebecca Ward, Lauren Houston, and Janet Stewart. Next we have Team Navy. Come on, speak to us, Roger. The video it was a neat video, but left out one thing. It was really hot. <laughs> it was really hot. Uh, had a great team this year. A um, couple of them I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to mention. Larry Lewis was going to speak also today, but Ezra got sick yesterday, so he couldn't be here today. So put Ezra in your prayers this, this afternoon that he'll be, he'll be well soon. Um, I'll be. Bobby Joe was was on the team. She served one day 
Then she was called back to the States off the ship because uh, she had a sick family. So she wasn't there. So up, up jumped Emily Hodges, and she was transferred into the boat and served well the last three days of, of the camp. Um, Megan, Megan's up here. No, Me Megan was my whistleblower. I told the kids the very first day, when you hear this whistle, be quiet and listen. There's an announcement coming. So she was my whistleblower. I'd give her a nod or a point at her, and she'd blow the whistle, and away we'd go. Um, my inspiration for this thing, did I mention it was hot? My inspiration for this thing was uh, Debbie, Debbie Haggard. Haggard. There she is right there. She has some health issues. She's really not supposed to be in the heat and, and definitely out of the sun. But she was there. She never quit. She was every day. She was out there doing what was needed to be done. And some of it was, was, it, was a lot of effort involved because it was hot. Um, I discovered one thing. This is for Barbara. I discovered one thing at camp. I'm not overweight. I'm over-insulated. I, I couldn't get cool. <laughs> I had a couple of kids I would bend over and was showing them something and they go, you're dripping on me. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> they, I had really this year no kids that I felt like that stood out in particular. The whole team stood out. There was a great bunch of kids. I had really no issues with, with problem kids at all that was a disappointment or whatever. I guess maybe I passed those guys on to the Air Force so they, can, they get to deal with them. <laughs> um, it's neat to watch the kids when they come to camp the first day, the second day, the third day, and the fourth day. They're a little hesitant that first day. They're a little clingy. They don't know which direction they're supposed to go. Um, and in all fairness, I think the moms or the dads that have brought them, they're a little clingy too. And, but they, they let them go and they go off or a parent will walk them all the way across our campus out there and then walk back and walk out. The second day, there's no hesitation at all. They don't even hug or kiss mom goodbye. They're gone. And she's just standing there. Where'd they go? Where'd they go? Bye. <laughs> so it's really neat to, to see that. And it's also neat after the camp is over or when they're bringing their kids up, not so much coming but going, to be able to walk out and interact with some of the parents. And, and, uh, and they're, they're, like, like Ryan said, they're so thankful that we're doing this and they're so confident that we're going to take care of, their, the, of our charge that they have given us. Um, in the Bible... There's, if, if, in, in, in Bible study, you're told if it's mentioned once in the Bible, pay attention. If it's mentioned more than once, really, really concentrate on what's being said. And this is mentioned three times in Matthew 18.6, Mark 10.42, and Luke 17.2. But whosoever shall offend one of these little ones which believe in me, it, it were better for him that a millstone were hanged around his neck and that he was drowned in the depths of the sea. God loves his children. He loves his children. And we here at First Bible do too. We really do. Um, we've, some of us talked about the serving part of this. Um, I encourage you guys to do that. To, um, When you, when you go on a journey, a, a, th a, a thousand mile journey begins with, which is a metaphor, but a thousand mile journey begins with step one. Step one is the hardest thing we do lots of times in those journeys that we're taking. And we have these journeys happening to us all the time. So I encourage you to just take step one. And I mentioned her the first time. If I had to go back to work next year, if I had to go back to work this year, God forbid, hopefully. But if I had to go back to work next year and they gave me one week's vacation, I would spend it here at First Bible Sports Camp. Thank you, Ron. Team Navy, which is Roger Zink, Lisa Curtis, Bobby Joe Schieber, Angie Williams, Bobby Bonner, Mark Brown, they let me hang out with them too, Larry Lewis, Megan Tiller, Debbie Hargan, and Emily Hodges as Roger highlighted a few of them. Next, Team Air Force, come speak to us a little bit. 
testify of the Lord. Hi, I'm Maddox. Uh, and I just wanted to share one little story. And it's kind of it's kind of like Lauren's. Uh, so my uh, my cousin was there. Uh, I I don't see her that often. Maybe once a year, because uh, she lives uh, kind of by Jeff City. But when they all got the New Testament Bibles, like she was she was so eager, like and excited. She told me it was the first Bible she'd ever gotten. And it was just, it was really cool. Unfortunately, I had to explain to her that Daniel and Isaiah were not in the New Testament. Uh, so she was a little disappointed, but I just, I told her Luke 2 might be a good place to start because she probably already knew a little bit of the Christmas story. But like, these kids are so eager to learn about Jesus and about the good news. It's just a reminder that like, when we try to fulfill the Great Commission and when we try to spread the gospel, like, God will work in the lives of even like even these little children. It's just it's just a reminder that like God's God's faithful to do what He said He's going to do is when we respond in faith to Him. So, yeah. Hello. So I'm pretty experienced in VBSC. I've done it all four years, um, and every year going into it, I wonder. Can I do this? Are the kids going to be good? Are the kids going to be bad? Am I going to be good? Am I going to be bad? <laughs> and the answer is yes <laughs> to all of the questions. Um, but just this year, the Lord really spoke to me about um, the power of his word and, and what it means for the, these kids to begin hiding the truth in their hearts at a young age, um, even if they don't have a relationship with Jesus right now. Because even the kids who are um, squirrely and you're like, they're surely not paying attention, um, will run up to you and have all these questions like, Daniel wasn't in the fire? Is he not important anymore? You know, just showing that they are starting to ponder these things in their heart and starting to um, think about them and think what's important to them. And the kids who are just lip syncing during music time, they come up at the end and they can say the memory verse, no problem. Um, and so that it just made me realize that um, there will come a time in these young people's lives that they will wonder where they can find help. They will wonder where their help comes from, and they will know that they can turn to the Bible, they can turn to the Word, and um, find the Lord in it, because he promises that if we seek him, well, we, we will find him, just like I did as a um, much younger person. And so I was just really encouraged um, about that this year. Thank you. Hi, my name's Gabe. Uh, I had the pleasure of working with Air Force again this year. Um, and just one thing I want to uh, just really emphasize, if you have the opportunity to work with VBSC, is the opportunities that you get with these kids. You said something about opportunities in first service, right? Right. Um, but it, it's just a great time. Uh, you know, I use the examples of, you know, it might be just walking from the bathroom back to the tent and you get a chance to talk to the kids. You know, I, one conversation I had with a girl found out she had like seven or eight brothers and sisters. And so that just sparked a whole bunch of other questions. Uh, and then, you know, it, and it may be while you're playing some of the sports with the kids and we're leading those. Uh, you know, we did football this year and maybe it's sharing an experience of a kid catching a football for the first time or they're struggling running the routes and actually catching the ball, and then they do catch it, and, they're, and their face lights up. Uh, and you get, to, you, get, you get to share those experiences with them. Um, but also, uh, with the scripture and the Bible stories, like Courtney was sharing uh, some of those, uh, but you know, I, I remember the, just the, first, the second day in the morning when all the kids were arriving, uh, they just show up to the tent and they sit down and they wait till it's time to start playing the sports. So we try and engage with them a little bit. Uh, and I just asked the question to the whole tent, who's memorized their verse so far? You know, not really expecting anybody to, to have it down yet. Uh, and one little girl just raised her hand and said, I have it memorized. I went home and practiced it all last night. Uh, and she repeated it and said it and she had it down just on, you know, on day two. Uh, so just knowing she went home after the first day excited enough to open up her Bible at home 
and read the verse over and over until she could get it down. Uh, because she didn't even have the song memorized yet, you know, as far as how the song went. But she had the verse down. Um, and so you get, you get to have great opportunities to share with these kids and uh, share in those experiences that they have as well. Uh, so just encourage anybody to uh, step up, have their own Game On moment, uh, the next VBSC, and, and help out. Team Air Force, which includes Gabe Lutz and Courtney Lutz, Coney, Coney, Coney Kenyon. Did you know Coney Kenyon? Connie Kenyon, Brandon Talbert. Brandon, come, you can come down anytime as well. Nathan Houston, Janet Talbert, Matthew Patterson, Titus Calloway, and Maddox Hughes. A lot of teenagers that were serving out there. Praise the Lord for just that part of the mission work of God and the vision of our church. Next, Team Marines, it's all yours. Hoorah. Um, so yeah, we, we had the Marines, which that's the oldest group. They're the 10 and 11 year olds, right? Um, and I think just two quick stories. So like the first one that I really realized is kind of what Roger said is how much Jesus really does love these little children, right? And if you were looking at those videos, like I had a hard time keeping my eyes dry because, you know, that you, you see those kids and you see them grow. And one of the coolest things that, that we saw in the Marines was we would every day before lunch, we would pray and I would pick a kid to pray. Well, Perhaps they just wanted to pray so they could hold the microphone, I don't know. But regardless, when you handed them that microphone, it didn't matter if they just spent the last 45 minutes giving you a hard time or saying they hated being here because they're too cool for school or whatever. When you gave them that mic, all of a sudden, it sounded like Dwayne Allen was praying. It was incredible. Like every single day, a kid got up there and just started praying the most mature prayer about how they pray that we'll, we'll take what we're learning and apply it to our lives. And that, so that was just really beautiful. Um, it, it was just a good reminder that, man, when we, when we love the Lord more, we're going to start loving the things that God loves more as well. Um, and the second, the second part was cool as well. And it, it's just a reminder that, like, um, that our, our church is about sports, and that, that's for a reason. And, and so a couple of weeks ago, um, we had, um, we, we had a, a mom who, who had, had sent her kids to VBSC and has been through other sports as well. And she called up, and she had heard that there's a youth camp coming up. Um, and so she, she called and said, hey, um, we'd love to sign our kids up. You know, um, it's just taking that, 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 lep, that leap of faith and, and, you know, and trusting her kids in our hands. And so she just signed her two junior high kids up for, um, for our youth camp coming up. And, um, and to me, it was just a newsflash because with, with, with our church, you know, being really focused on sports, that, that's not because we have two former professional athletes, even though that's a, that's a cool part of it. It's because our community loves sports. And so 1 Corinthians 9 talks about how we're supposed to love other people in the, in, in the way that they are, right? So it, it, we're supposed to be like them in order to reach them. And so if our community cares about sports then in order to reach them, we may need to care about sports as well. And so that, man, that, that's why we're about sports is because that's what our community needs. So. so the other three years I've done VBSC, I've always done the Navy, which is like the seven, eight-year-olds. Um, I didn't realize how different the Marines are. Ten-year-olds are a lot different than the, the younger, um, younger kids. Um, especially around day three, because day three is always the time you're really down, really dragging. You know, I don't really want to do much, don't want to show up, but love Jesus, so I'm going to show up anyway. Um, and so that day we were doing soccer, and Eddie told me I was, uh, was going to be repping that day. So I said, amen right there. I don't have to do much, just throw the ball out there, kick it, have fun. I'm just going to relax. That's all good with me. I didn't realize afterwards that that meant I was going to be running for about an hour, 45 minutes, just up and down, up and down, up and down, because they're very, very competitive. Um, so that was fun, but I think the biggest thing I took away from it was doing the worship. Normally we do that inside the past two years, and this year we did it outside, um, which was cool because whenever we would sing, I would be able to see the students and see the parents. And so normally after day one, uh, parents just sat in their cars, kind of waited for us to get done, and then they would just, you know, get out of their cars, we take their kids back to them. And around day two, day three, they would want to come up to the fence. They would want to join us in worship. And I thought that was really cool to notice how, like, even though we're singing to the kids, like, the parents also want to be around it because they could feel the presence of God and they wanted, to be, they wanted to be around it and experience it for themselves. So I thought it was cool to notice that even though we're impacting these kids' lives, they're going home and it's impacting their, I mean, their parents and it's impacting the whole family. So that's what I took away from it. That was good. I'm praising the Lord. Amen. 
Why don't you uh, jump into Galatians 6 with me for just a few minutes. And uh, yeah, the insulated thing was very, very good. I'm going to be using that. Thank you, Barbara. Roger passing it on. Team Marines, that was Josh and Addie Bennett. Eddie Hodges, Tony Smith, Elena Valverde, Sabrina Patterson, Matthew Tiller, Larry Williams, Morgan Hughes, Tucker Hughes. So quite a group. We had about 30 of us up here, and there was another 20 to 25, almost 30, that were also involved. So thanking the Lord. We've been speaking out of Galatians. I'm only going to take a few minutes, and then I'm going to introduce a, a, a couple that you may, many of you remember. We just call them Mr. and Mrs. Sleep in Heavenly Peace. They do have actual names, though, as well. But they're going to be up here in a few moments to just share a word about our next opportunity corporately and collectively when it comes to regional missions. You see, when you see up on the screen a little bit like this, this idea about regional missions, we're about missions. And as we've had study in Galatians chapter number 6, uh, and, you're, and you and I are have something put before us, the Word of God telling us, you can use your liberty freely and completely the way that God would say. It says in verse 13 of chapter 5, For brethren, we have been called into liberty, only use not liberty for an occasion to the flesh. But by love serve one another. You're free to serve the Lord and serve one another. It says in Galatians 5, 1, stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ hath made you free. So guess what? All these people and all those others and all those that are involved and all of you that are involved in many mission work things in your life, of course, corporately is one thing and collectively, but personally, you have a liberty in Christ to sit there and not pay attention. You have a liberty in Christ to sit there and just ignore God. Or you have the liberty in Christ to use it as an incredible opportunity to say, God, I'm here, I'm your living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto you, I pray, and that's what I want to be as your reasonable service. So people said, hey, God work in me, both the will and to do of his good pleasure. So we celebrate the Lord through what we're doing in regional missions, and this is one of them. Our Acts 2 project shines with an opportunity for our community. And so when you think of, okay, how deep does that go and how, how much further and why do you do that? Are we supposed to have just a big project thing every week and, and all those things? No, these are just places in which we integrate on the mission work and all of us are involved in that, which goes to verse number 10 of Galatians chapter number six. I'm just gonna highlight this verse. I'm gonna speak to you for just a few minutes and again, tie things together, bring up uh, our, our, our friends from Sleep in Heavenly Peace and let them share a little bit of what we're headed into and bring things together. It says, as we have therefore opportunity, let us do good. Let us do good unto all men, especially unto them who are of the household of faith. That phrase, let us do good unto all men. When you think, okay, God, is that just a few or some or many? No, because it goes back to verse num the first part of the verse. We have therefore opportunity which goes backwards to verse number seven, God is not mocked whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he reap. Verse number eight, for that soweth, to, when you sow to your flesh, you reap uh, corruption. But when you sow to the spirit, you reap the spirit, life everlasting. We can sow, sow sparingly, we can sow bountifully. And that's what God wants us to do. So that's what our regional mission really was all about. Touch, tug, take hold. You have heard this phraseology if you've worked in sports ministry. I believe in this model of Jesus. It's really just a great way of looking at, another way of looking at Jesus Christ and how he got involved in people's lives. He touched people's lives. Maybe Jesus Christ would send people a text if he was living now. I don't know. But he would verbally go up and talk to them. Then tug them, tug on their lives. That he would then go a little bit further and then, of course, take hold. It's a progression of relationship. It's making deeper connection. We're to cultivate God's heart in God's mission with God's people. To do good to all men. To do good to all men. Because we have been given opportunity. You and I sit here wondering, well, I don't know if I have an opportunity. I don't know if I have an opportunity. You live in the United States of America. 
Have you noticed that there's a few people that have been moving into Blue Springs the last five years? I say it a lot. There's people everywhere that are moving to the Midwest. They're relocating or they're moving there or they're coming from the city out to the suburbs or if we go, but we live in Blue Springs. There's, when we moved here 23 years ago, there was high 40s, mid to high 40s in population. Now it's mid to high 50s in the population of Blue Springs. There's people around and we have opportunity. So here you go devotional message for a couple of minutes on this simple verse and this simple thought of touch, tug, take hold because as we have, therefore, opportunity, let us do good unto all men, especially unto them who are of the household of faith. I did mention this verse last week in our study in verses one through 10, but we're really gonna highlight. Again, this is just a simple devotional preaching message for a few minutes and it really is highlighting let us do, let us do good unto all men. First thing, touch. If I was to touch someone's life, the purpose would be what? To reach out. I am committed. Over the years, maybe in your walk, you're less committed to reaching out because you like you more than you like most everybody else. But after a while, you grow a little older, and maybe you become like me, and you go, I really don't like me. I would rather reach out to other people. You have to be committed to touch people's lives. You really have to be committed. You have to be committed to the commandments. You have to be committed to the word of God. You have to be committed to the spirit of God working in you, the love, joy, peace, and long suffering. You have to be committed to a personal walk with the Lord. You have to be willing to touch other people's lives. It says up on the screen, just highlighting the first part of that verse, as we have therefore opportunity. So. Are you committed to the opportunity that's before you? I'm not, not, not VBSC. Stop. I'm not making a big pitch and legalistically you have to fall into this mission work or else you're a failure. I'm not saying that. It's personally for you. Am I committed to touching people? Because touching people results in building bridges. I know that was a tagline in the big important phraseology in church culture and life culture 15, 20, 25 years ago. It's important still to build bridges into people's lives. Touching people results in building bridges. But sometimes we build them as if they were an edifice or just that physical bridge that, um, hey, something had to be erected from one place to another, and, and so it spans it, and that's what it does, and then you just walk away and don't do anything. No, we have to do something with it. Build bridges in people's lives, walk across that bridge, and reach your hand out to that person. That's what VBSC gives us an opportunity to do corporately and collectively, but we're to do it personally Secondly, when I see the tug part of it, the purpose in tugging is to reach within. I reach, I'm reaching out, now I'm reaching within. You have to be determined to hear from God when it comes to your walk with him personally reaching within. What do you mean? Well, is it the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ that saved you or not? It is. For by grace are you saved through faith. Not of yourselves is the gift of God, not of works lest any man should boast. That verse, that passage could not be sent enough. It goes into Ephesians chapter number one, that you have this incredible, earnest redemption from the promise of the Holy Spirit. You are saved and born again, so how does that fit to tug? Well, guess what? Touching people's lives is just to build a little bit of a relationship, but when it goes further and you have the chance to tug on people's lives, it's me looking within and saying, this gospel saved me, am I determined to give that gospel to someone else? Or is it just yours? It's the good news of Jesus Christ. You say, save me, fine. You want to be personal about it, fine. But stop being so selfish with this incredible opportunity to tug at people's lives with the gospel. It says up on the screen in the second part of that verse, let us do good unto all men. The goodest thing you could ever do for someone is give them the gospel. The goodest thing. Why would you not give the gospel to someone and share the truth of the word of God and how the Bible says that you can be saved? That you can be saved from your sins? You can no longer have to be, pay for your sins and be lost and go to hell? That's tugging people, and when, it does, when you do that, it results in transformed lives. New creatures in Christ. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Do you remember when you got saved and someone took the time to tug at your life because you said, please tug at my life and tell me the truth about what the gospel means? And then lastly, this last part of the verse, take hold. 
take hold. That goes a little bit further beyond building bridges, of course, and how you're building relationships as you walk across so that you can get closer and closer to build up that trust so that you can just share the gospel with that person. Of course, I know that sometimes you just talk to just someone you meet. You don't even have a chance to build up that relationship, and it goes from touch to tug rather quickly. But then that person who has been tugged, now it's a matter of the purpose and taking hold is to reach beyond. I am invested. What happens when you lead someone to Jesus Christ? Or is it that I'm in discipleship, I want to mentor people, I want to teach people how to serve, I'm waiting for other people to lead other people to the Lord. Why don't you just go lead somebody to the Lord? And after you lead them to the Lord, after touching their lives, after tugging their lives, and how you would say, okay, now I'm going to take hold of your life, I'm willing by the Lord and his word for him to use me in your life. I'm invested. The last part of the verse says this. If we're going to do good, and we ought to do good, to all men, follow the Bible, especially to them who are the household of faith. Look around. How is it that, again, from going back to last week's message, that we would not have time for one another? I need to be committed, I need to be dedicated, and I also need to be just at the point of determined, dedicated. I have to be a place where I'm going to just invest my life. Taking hold of people results in mentoring servants. Mentoring means to advise to train, to disciple, to invest in. It covers all of it. Sometimes you don't have a chance to sit down with somebody over the Word of God every single week, but sometimes you just have a chance to pour into other people's lives like everybody here did to someone else. Roger, just pouring into Tammy, Brian, Brenda. That's what you're doing is you are taking hold of people in the body of Christ to disciple us to teach us, to train us on how to touch and tug. See, it all comes full circle to what we see up on the screen, which is very simply this. I repeat what I said earlier. Touch, tug, and take hold off of this passage means simply to cultivate God's heart in God's mission work with God's people. We're together on this. We're all together. Brian said it when he said, hey, you just have a small picture for a few days of the mission work that God's called us to, the vision of this church as an Acts 1-8 church that sees the Acts 2 project as going further. On October 11th, we're going to have an opportunity for another corporate and collective mission work, a regional mission work. And before we close out in a few minutes, I've asked our friends, Scott, why don't you come up, you and your wife, if you would like to come up as well and be able to, why don't you welcome our friends of the Lord. And what I'd like them to do is take a few minutes, as it says up there, sleep in heavenly peace, to share a little bit of the work where you've been the last couple years, since we last saw you, and how we're partnering a little bit with them, a lot of it with them in this opportunity of regional missions to raise funds for sleep in heavenly peace. I wish I was as energetic and exciting as him, but I'm not. So anyways, uh, my name's Scott, and this is Lisa, and we are the bed people um, here in Blue Springs. But um, we have an amazing team of 30 people. It's not just us. So um, I've, always, uh, I've always wanted to ask this question, but I'll just say most of us... Uh, slept in a bed last night. Some of us, if not a lot of us, may not have woke up feeling great and amazing. I know some days I don't. Um, I, I have a perfect bed and I wake up with aches and pains, but imagine not having a bed and having to sleep on the floor every night and then get up, go to school, and have to give your all. So, um, I work for the phone company, and I work inside people's houses. I've done it for 20-something years, and over that time, I've seen the conditions that kids sleep in. Um, a lot of times, I'd be walking through the house, I'd see the pile of dirty clothes sitting in the corner, you know, with the nest in the middle of it where that child slept that night. Um, we'd walk in, we'd see the kids, uh, you know, laying on couch cushions, if, if they had that opportunity to have a soft place to sleep. And I always imagined, um, you know, what, what kind of future 
these kids are going to have because I know when I wake up in the morning and I don't feel my best, it's hard for me to give my all um, when I'm at work. And these kids are developing. And so, you know, they, they have to be able to focus and pay attention in school. And, you know, a lot of times I know when I wake up and I'm not feeling my best, I'm, I don't always have the best personality at work. I'm probably not the, the favorite person to be around. And so then I wonder about these kids and their social lives and how it affects them and um, just being tired and probably being irritable. Nobody wanted to hang around with them. But then um, we also hear doctors talk about how not having a proper place to sleep affects bone growth. So um, bone growth, muscle growth, um, the way um, we form. So. Uh, I've learned that a bed's important in a lot of ways. So it affects us physically, emotionally, and socially. And we wanted to do something about that. And so we came across Sleep in Heavenly Peace. We started doing this. Uh, many of you were a part of the golf tournament uh, two years ago and the build thereafter. And we are really blessed to have this opportunity to do this again. Um, we thank you guys so much. Um, quick story, kind of off task, but a couple weeks ago I did a post on Facebook and I was talking about how difficult it is um, when I see it running a nonprofit where, you know, you, you, you hit these lulls and nothing happens and you're sitting there and you're wondering, it's like, is, is this really what God wants you to do? You know, you're not seeing nothing. But then I have to remind myself, you know, if we don't experience the lows, then we don't get the joy from the highs. And when things happen and God reaches out to us, and it was within a couple of days of me posting this on Facebook that the church reached out to us. And we actually had an absolutely amazing week. Um, we had several people reach out to us about it. Um, we actually got good news. We got a new house and some land, and it was just like, everything fell into place and it's like this is exactly what I was talking about so anyways um, we're, we're, we're so blessed by this we've been doing this for three years now we started this in July of 2018 and we have delivered beds to almost 1300 kids here in Kansas City <laughs> what we love about this is it's not two people it's not 30 people building beds this is a community project it's why we chose this it's an opportunity for everybody to get involved and come together and be a part of something great and so um you know it's almost i want to say we've had almost 2700 volunteers in the last three years um, last year we were met with struggles, of course, like everybody else, because of that stinking COVID thing. But in September, last, when we started in September, I think, last year, in six weeks we built 550 beds. We did a year's worth of beds in six weeks. And so it was amazing. And so, you know, I, this year, I didn't really want to focus on numbers. Um, I, I want to say, I, I don't want to say I didn't set a goal because inside you know I did. But we're having a, we're having a great year. Um, and we still have lots of kids that need help. And I think we're sitting at about two or three, about 200. Yeah, I haven't looked at the numbers. We're sitting at about 225 on the waiting list. So... And last week, we don't know what happened, but all of a sudden we started getting eight, nine, ten requests per day. And uh, each request averages two and a half beds. So, uh, like I said, I don't know, it popped up on the news somewhere. Somewhere, something, the news got out, bam, we get hit hard. And that happens here and there. But anyway, so um, we appreciate this opportunity. Um, there's two opportunities here. Uh, if you know how to play golf, Great. If you don't know how to play golf, great. Come on out. <laughs> Whack a ball. I mean, you know, I, I've seen some of these guys play, and 
They sound better off the golf course than they looked on the golf course. So anybody can do it. But uh, come out and volunteer for the golf tournament. You know, it's another great way to serve. Um, you know, we're going to be looking for sponsors. So if you work for a company that likes to get involved, get their name out there, um, that's a great opportunity. And then following the golf tournament, um, two Sundays after that, we will uh, be doing a build here in the parking lot um, after church. Yes. So uh, we'll have everything set up out here just like we did last time, and you can come out and serve. Another great thing about what we do, you don't have to know nothing. Um, anybody can do this. We have kids as young as five and six come out and help us. We have a job for everybody. And we have a trained team that's there. We're going to find you a spot, show you what to do, and we're going to build four. We'll build at least 40 beds, I'm sure of it, in about three hours' time. So, anyways, we thank you guys so much for your help. Why don't you guys go ahead and stand, and we'll finish up. Make sure you come up and greet. Now you ruin it, Mr. and Mrs. Beds. I thought Sleep in Heavenly Beast was a little bit cooler. But we're very, very thankful for the opportunity when you gather in church settings. This is to declare the glory of God. We do not forsake the assembling of ourselves together. We don't forsake it, take it for granted. We consider one another and we lift one another up. And so we point to our God in heaven and give him all the glory. Thank you for allowing us to partner with you. And thank you, church, for jumping in on what we do together when it comes to regional missions. Don't forget, when you leave today, the mission field, the old phrase is it's always there before you for you to touch, tug, and take hold of people personally and individually. Thank you, Father, again for this glorious day in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you that you're working in us both the will and to do of your good pleasure. Thank you that we have opportunity and we've been given opportunity to do good unto all men, especially those that are of the household of faith. Thank you for sleep in heavenly peace and what they are about to have people come in the name of the Lord, in the name of just good to do to others. And I pray this church you would get a hold of our hearts to do what's right and continue to live our walk out in the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you for this beautiful morning, for our VBSC testimonies. It's all to you, all to your glory. We thank you, God, in Jesus' name. And God's people said, amen. amen.